My name is Gavin Evans and this is my review of WandaVision and this will be a spoiler fed review so if you haven't seen it don't go and watch it just keep watching my review but this will be an in-depth review and just a heads up this is filmed in November of 2021 why am I giving you that heads up because I'm going to be talking about specific things that by the time this comes out in July of 2022 it might not age well. I know we've got Spider-Man and Doctor Strange coming out. So some things I say in this review might not hold up to the point well when it actually comes out. And I also say that I was going to watch the show again and review it. But the truth is I have no interest in ever re-watching it. So I wrote a bunch of notes when I first watched it. But for the most part this is going off of memory. So just a heads up if my review seems a little messy. But let's talk about my thoughts as the show is progressing. I really loved the first two episodes. I thought they embraced the sitcom approach to this show really well. They were funny. The characters were just really different than what we've ever seen them do before and it raised enough questions. Episode 3 was still decent, it raised enough questions as well, but at the same time, the sitcom aspect didn't work too well for me. Episode 4 is just an atrocious episode of television. It's just non-stop exposition. It fills in every possible blank that the show could have. It's just way too much information like it feels like at that point they just want to explain everything so nothing's left to interpretation which i just think is very lazy so i was just like ah oh, do i really want to keep watching this show after that episode but episode five came out and that was my favorite episode first we got the great scene of wanda leaving the whatever they call it i don't know the big feel Whatever the town's called. We got Wanda entering the real world for the first time in the show and that was a great moment. The performance of Paul Bentley as Vision, especially in that last scene, is really great. And the emotional tension as it rises between Vision and Wanda was excellent. It addresses Wanda's grief and the parallels between her explaining the dog dying to her kids and what she needs to understand as well. That was really well done. I also thought the episode had some funny moments. I thought the entire moment with Vision's co-worker, like he wakes him up, he's just like, help me, help me. And then Vision puts him back. Like that was excellent stuff. In fact, I wish the show approached that element so much more because that stuff just is excellent. And then we get the great cliffhanger of Quicksilver coming in, Evan Peters, and I was just like, okay, you know, I'm very much against the idea of Fox coming into the MCU, but that actually intrigued me. So I'm just like, okay, let's see what they do with that. Huh. Likes. Uh, looking back, just, they did not deliver on that. Episode 6 was also really good. The sitcom elements, not so much, but Vision walking to the town as he sees, like, that one lady putting away laundry and you can see that she's crying. And, uh, like, that stuff is so excellent and creepy. Why didn't they embrace that more? Oh, just baffling. And it ends with a great cliffhanger. The other stuff in the episode isn't great, but whatever. Then we get episode 7, which was... Eh, it was decent. I remember it actually looked really bad. Like, the episodes embraced the sitcom roots in visually interesting ways. But this one approached the sitcom roots in visually ugly ways. Like, this entire episode is just way too lit. And I don't like the visual look of it whatsoever. And... For the most part, it's just like, okay, this is an okay episode of television, but it ends very interestingly. Like, you're just like, oh, does Agatha has the kids? And then she enters that basement that just reminded me of Sleeping Beauty, Maleficent, just the purple vines. And I'm just like, oh, we're going into, like, full supernatural te territory. We see this evil spell book, and then we get the Agatha all along, which is a great song. I like... I just kind of liked how this show did weird stuff like that every now and again. But the end of this episode, I'm just like, oh, okay, is this show about to get even crazier? Like, I'm so down for this. And then we got episode 8, which at the time, I did really like it. Uh, now looking back, I really don't. I don't like these flashback type of episodes. Just, oh, Agatha's going to show Wanda her past. And there's just nothing interesting here. Like, knowing what we knew of Wanda already would be enough. And now looking back on this episode, I really don't like it. Which is a 180 compared to my thoughts in the episode when I first saw it. Because I'm just like, okay, she's about to go full evil here. Let's, let's see it. You know, let, let us get understand it. And, well, the show didn't go on that route. So I'm just like, okay, well, now I feel like we didn't need an entire episode showing, showing stuff that we've already known about up until then. So, yeah. 
episode 8, very bad episode. And then we got episode 9. And I was just like, okay, is there going to be some more crazy twists? Will there be Mephisto? Is there going to be more going on to than what we know now? And the answer to that is no. Uh, everything that was once unique and creative about this show is now gone into a nonsense called CGI disaster, which was just an abysmal episode of television in every single way. And now when I look back on the rest of the show, even the episodes I like, I liked for specific reasonings. And now when I look back on the rest of the show, there's just very little to like about it. I think this last episode retroactively brings the entire show down. And let me go into why. Let's first talk about the performances. Elizabeth Olsen is really great in this show. I will give her that. Her uh, whole performance is not one of the weak spots. She fully embraces the sitcom approach to it incredibly well, and she also hits those emotional beats when needed. Tyona Paris is, she's good. She's good as well. Uh, Catherine Hahn is good in this show. Her character is terribly written, but what Catherine Hahn does with that character at least makes her somewhat memorable, and she adds lots of life and personality into her, so I'll give Catherine Hahn credit there. But the best performance in this entire show is, I already said it, but Paul Bettany. I, I just think he hit those emotional beats so perfectly, especially at the end of episode 5. And just the fact that he's like the one person grounded in what's right in this show. He's the one steering Wanda towards what's right. He's like the moral compass. He just plays that role so perfectly. And he also shows some great comedic talent here. I think he was really fantastic in this show. The rest of the cast, no. I don't think they were good. Kat Dennings and Randall Park, they just they just don't belong here. They feel way too comedic and over the top to the point where they make every single one of their scenes, even if it's meant to be serious, they make it feel like it's supposed to be funny. I I, I do not think they were good in this show whatsoever. Uh, the two kids, I hate saying this because they're just kids, but they're really bad in this show too. And well, I didn't mention Evan Peters. Evan Peters is good in this show, but it's impossible not to look back on his performance as like, oh, why didn't they do this other thing, which I'll get into. But yes, the performances are very hit or miss, but for the most part, the lead performances, the ones that the show relies on, are quite good. Let's talk about the handling of the characters within this show, beginning with Wanda, the Wanda and WandaVision. Uh, I hated the way they treated her character here. Uh, she is straight out evil in this show. She might not have meant to be evil, but she's definitely evil here. And the fact that they just want to paint her as a hero, even at the end of it all, it's just baffling. Let's just make something clear. She made people passengers in their own body. She had kids locked in their room for weeks. She did all of this evil stuff. And at the end, the show wants us to feel bad for her. No. It's not holding her accountable to her actions, and it's just not morally interesting. The show paints everything black or white when really it should have embraced that gray. And because the show doesn't do that, I, I just can't believe how badly they mishandled this character. And the big finale, what it does is it gives her a new costume and it makes her name the Scarlet Witch. Who gives a shit? No one, like, did people actually be like... <laughs> That's the Scarlet Witch! I read comics with the Scarlet Witch before. Were people actually excited about that? So we got this entire show just so she could get a new name and a new costume. <laughs> how, how incredibly stupid. And then we get the second last episode where she's revisiting her past. She's watching all these clips of what happened to her before. And this is what pushes her towards being a good guy in the last episode. This is what does it. It's the laziest kind of character arc because everyone's just like, oh, this show's about grief and how we can overcome it. And then how does Wanda overcome it? She just watches a clip show of her past and reacts to it. It's so lazy. Like, that's just not an interesting route to take this character. It's just like, ah, we need a way to make her feel bad, you know, to make her from the bad guy to the good guy. And someone's just like, oh, let's just make her... Watch what happened to you in the past, so the audience can understand her better, even though that episode reveals nothing new to us. And then we can see, oh, so now we understand her more. So it's really, oh, the audience is the one witnessing her change, but really the character herself hasn't changed at all. 
Do you get what I'm saying? Vision was kind of well handled in this show. Like I said, I like the fact that he's a moral compass. He's the one that's kind of steering Wanda towards being a good person. Uh, but let me make something clear. Uh, I hate the fact that they brought him back. But Gavin, they didn't bring him back. No, he died at the end. Pfft, give me a freaking break. They brought him back. So, Avengers Infinity War ends on a great note. Vision dies not just once, but twice. And that was really fantastic stuff. And then this show's just like, well, we want the character to keep around. So then they had this convoluted way of making a new evil Vision who becomes the good Vision or something like that. And now Vision, by the end of this show, there's still a version of him alive. And I just think it's boring when you bring back all these dead characters. It just shows that actions don't have consequences and that when anything bad happens, it can always be undoed in the next movie. So that to me is just uninteresting. But let's talk about Wanda and Vision together because that's meant to be the emotional core of this show. And does it work? No. The first half is an over-the-top fictionalized version of their relationship. It's meant to be so over-the-top, but at the same time, it's also completely relying on the fact that Wanda's not telling Vision the truth. So that alone creates some pullback. And then the second half of the show hardly even has them together there's this big emotional tension between them at the end of episode 5 and we just get no resolution to that and then they just split apart until the very end of the show. So no, I didn't care about the two of them. And now let's talk about Agatha. That's right, Agatha and All Along. And even though that's a really catchy song, can someone please answer me this? What is Ag Agatha All Along? What was Agatha All Along? Okay. Um, she came to this world not being a passenger in her own body. Uh, she brought Evan Peters to try to trick Wanda so she can tell her how she did this. She provides the cable for Wanda's flashbacks. And then she's the big boss fight. But none of that is the interesting stuff in this show. Well, it's Wanda and... The grief that she's dealing with that this show is about. And Agatha just has zero impact on that. She shows up, she does a few things just so this show could be a few more episodes long. But at the end of it, she really doesn't do anything except be the big final boss. You could argue that she's the one who provided the flashbacks, which she did at the throughout episode 8. But it's just like, that's really all she did in the show. I still like what Catherine Hahn brought to this character, but the writing behind Agatha is off. Wanda's kids, I could not have cared less about. They're magically born and raised, and because of that, they don't feel like real people, and then we see them, like, in one scene, and that's it. Like, I don't care for these two characters. I don't care if anything happens to them. And, like, it's just like, oh, well, don't you care because they're Wanda's kids? Yeah, but they're not actually, so no, I do not care. The use of Quicksilver was laughably bad. Uh, the Waff Bono joke was not funny whatsoever. And I, I, I just don't understand what they were thinking. Evan Peters is a fan favorite as Quicksilver. We all loved him in X-Men Days of Future Past as this character. And rightfully so, Evan Peters is a great actor. Um, but just for him to come back and... Everyone can be like, oh, that's Quicksilver. And then for them to be like, haha, but it's actually not. And think that's satisfying. And he doesn't even have any impact on the plot. He's there for one episode to talk to Wanda. And he's just like, oh, so how did you do this? And Wanda's just like, I don't know. And then, ta-da, his war is solved. Uh, just a baffling, awfully written character. Jimmy and Darcy did not need to be in this show. They added nothing. I guess Darcy gave some exposition to Vision in that one episode, but that's about it. Um, yeah, I really don't think they should have been characters. Monica, she's in this show, and all she really does is get her power so she can be in the next Marvel movie with superpowers. Her character was not needed here. They kind of use her as someone else to push Wanda towards the good, but yeah, by the end, she really added nothing to this show. And then we get Hayward, and Hayward is actually an interesting character and another terribly mishandled character uh, because he's absolutely right. He's not the villain here. Like, the fact that he wants to attack Wanda for holding an entire town hostage, 
he's completely in the right to want to attack her. And the fact that he's doing it in a smart way, kudos to the guy, really. But the show is not interested in being morally gray. They want to paint everyone black or white and they just want to paint him as a villain. So therefore, he's an evil villain trying to kill Wanda. Why? Because the script says so. I just... Mm, very mishandled character. And then we get the other vision who just wasn't needed. I'm so sick and tired of Marvel movies being like, Oh, the villain is the hero, but different. And then, yeah, like, he's in the show, he adds a bunch of CGI nonsense to it, and then he flies off, and he'll come back in a future movie. <sighs> Just a terribly. You know, one other thing I actually didn't say about the original Vision, which I really should have, is the fact that he wasn't the original Vision. He was one that Wanda made up of him in his mind. So this entire time, the show acts like he's a Vision that we've come to know and love over the past few movies, but he never is. You know, I have this mindset that... What we are, the person that we are today, is based on the memories that we have. Because what's happened to us that shape who we are. And if that person, if one day I, I lost all my memories, I wouldn't be the same person. So the vision that we see in this show isn't even the vision that this show is asking us to care about. That's supposed to be the big motivator behind Wanda's actions. Because it's not the same guy. Anyways, I forgot to say that, so I just wanted to say that here. Okay, let's talk about fan theories, because this show had lots of fan theories behind it, and people are just like, well, it's not your fault that the show didn't become the show you want it to be, but they introduced certain elements of it that they never followed up on. They introduced all these interesting ideas. Instead of taking this show in a new interesting direction, they fell back on the safest, most generic route. For example, in episode 2, everyone's just like, for the children... It was really creepy and menacing. You're just like, what's going on? Why why are they chanting for the children? Like it had like a cult like vibe behind it. And I was very curious to what was going on. You know, in episode five, Vision's just like, why are there no kids? Why? Isn't that weird? And then the next episode, there's a bunch of kids. And the answer we get is, oh, Wanda then let them out of their womb. And then Wanda's kids just are born and magically grown like that. And it's just like this show made a big deal to be about kids in some way. And the truth is, I thought this show was going to introduce Memphisto. Yes, I know. And it was going to go into like some of the more darker, supernatural direction of the MCU. That, they're, that he wants her kids, you know, so he can live or something like that. And just go in this crazy direction. You know, they even introduce a book called The Book of the Damned. And what do they do with it? Nothing. They introduce all these creepy ideas. Like, once again, Vision's co-worker just being stuck in his own body, unable to say or do anything, just doing whatever Wanda wants him to. And the show doesn't dive into that. It doesn't fully embrace that horrific idea. There's all these chants about for the children. There's these children that are magically born and raised and they're captured. And what role do they end up playing? None. The show has Agatha Ark and whatever her name is as this evil witch. And they even have a flashback of her back at the Salem witch trials. And I'm just like, okay, this is interesting. We're, going, we're introducing more supernatural magical elements and they just do nothing with it. Nothing interesting with it. And yes, I'm not saying Memphisto had to be in this show, but I was hoping that he would be because the entire time the show's just getting, building all these ideas up and they just deliver on nothing. That scene where Wanda goes into Agatha's basement and there's all those purple vines, I'm just like, are they going to like enter hell or something? And they just don't. In fact, the follow-up to that episode is we get a bunch of scenes from the previous movies that we haven't seen before. What I'm saying is, the show starts off as something unique and different and feel like it's a show that's going to take risks. And then once the show introduces that mindset, it then strays away from it and just ends up being a generic Marvel show. I almost said Marvel movie, but this is a show. They take no risks behind the initial ones. At the very beginning of this show, I'm just like, okay... Well, Wanda's clearly grieving over Vision. She found a way to bring him back somehow. And now they're living in this perfect sitcom world. 
and okay, Agatha is clearly evil, so what's going to happen in the show? And by the end of the show, I found out no new additional information. None. The show never evolved past what I initially thought of it as. Starts off as one thing and ends off as one thing. So there's no progression, there's no escalation. The only sort of escalation we get is when Vision starts discovering what's going on. But I don't care as much as that because I thought there'd be more going on and I was invested like what else is he going to find out, you know, about these people trapped in their own bodies, unable to do anything. But no, they, they, they don't lean into that. We just were waiting for Vision to find out what we already knew. And that is just so uninteresting. And the finale is atrocious. Like, and I knew it was going to be because they released, I'm going to see if I can find the picture, but they released this picture. Hopefully I found it. As soon as I saw that, I'm just like, oh, that looks visually ugly. Oh man, this is going to be bad, ain't it? And yes, it was. The finale has just some of the worst action I've seen. It's just CGI nonsense with no stakes. And they're just making up things on the spot. And then they stop to fight every once in a while. And they're just like, let's have a conversation about stuff that the audience doesn't care about. And I'm supposed to be like, oh yes, this is awesome. But no. And like I said, at the end of it, it's just way too neat of an ending. Like the way I feel at the end of the show is, oh man, Wanda got away and they got Hayward. Man, that's a real bummer. Hayward is the hero. Wanda is the villain. But the show doesn't want to go into that. They want to play it safe. They want to play it in the most uninteresting way. They want us to feel bad for Wanda. Like, oh, she lost Vision again. I don't care. She's evil. Look, I appreciate this show started off and was trying to do something different. It does have some funny moments. It does have some strong performances. But every single character is so terribly written and mishandled. The show lacks any bit of nuance or depth. Anytime you think the show might go in a new and interesting direction, it doesn't. It then takes the safest, most generic route they could have taken. The show is just so very bad. So I'm going to go ahead and give WandaVision a 4 out of 10. Okay, have you seen WandaVision? What did you think about it? Let me know in the comments down below. Make sure you like, make sure you comment, make sure you subscribe. Stay tuned for some more videos soon, and Gavin 